Hi and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking glowing blob effect using Adobe After Effects and Trapcode Tower. So anyways guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we have to do here is we have to create a new composition and I'm just going to run with a 1920 by 1080 pixel document and I'm going to make sure that it's 30 FPS and I'm going to run it for about 10 to 15 seconds. Just press OK. Once we've got that, the next thing that we need to do is we need to create a solid. So I'm just going to label this solid tau. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for the effect called Trap Code Tau. Now, just a reminder that Trap Code Tau is a paid plugin from Red Giant. So if you do not have it, please make sure that you download it before continuing on with this tutorial. So now that that's out of the way, now we're going to change this. And in the previous video, I, I liked it so much that I really wanted to come back and do another one here. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to open up the path generator. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to change the size. I'm going to bring it all the way down to zero. Then once I've done that, so we can close up the path generator. Then I'm going to open up the segments. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the segment mode to repeat sphere. I'm going to change the segments to one and then I'm going to increase the sides to let's say 1000. And now once you've done that, now I can start to slowly increase the size to create a kind of ball blob that's going to fit on my page here. So maybe somewhere around 350 maybe 400, something like that. Once you've got that, the next thing that we need to do is we need to come over to rotate Y and we just need to change that to 90. So now we've got all of that done in segment, we can close that off. And the next thing that we're gonna have a look at is the fractal displacement. So the first thing that we're gonna do in the fractal displacement here is we're gonna change the fractal type to multi smooth bridge. So I'm gonna change that and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the space to segment and nothing's happening just yet, but let's increase the amplitude. So if I bring that up to about 40, you can now see what's actually happening. Now there's no movement just yet, so we're going to do some animating soon, but you can play around with how much amplitude you want. So in the last video, we, we made it have a bit more of a, you know, like these ridges and stuff over here. So this time I'm going to really make it more like a blob. So I'm going to stick it around 40, maybe even 45, something like that. The next thing that we need to worry about is the frequency. Now, if we increase the frequency, you're going to get different effects. But what we're going to do here is I'm going to drop it down to about 100. So it's, you know, there's less uh, defects coming out of that blob. The next thing that we need to do is we need to animate the evolution and the offset Y. So I'm going to start on the first keyframe over here, click the stopwatch for evolution, click the stopwatch for offset Y, move to the end of the timeline and then bump up these values to what you like. So I'm going to use 1000 there and for offset Y, I'm going to make it 2000. And so now if you scrub through that, now you can see that it's really looking like a big blob and now you've got these things coming out of it and I think that's looking pretty cool. So the other thing we're going to increase is we're going to bring up the complexity. All right. So it just makes it look a little bit more like there's something going on in there and we're going to smoothen it out with smooth normals. So we're just going to up that to about three or so. Then what we need to do is we are going to come down to the individual amplitude and frequency and we're going to change two values. Amplitude X, we're going to bring down to zero and amplitude Z, we are also going to bring down to zero. And so now moving on, we're just going to close that up. We're going to go back to material and lighting. And so in here, I'm going to change a few settings. So the ambient, I'm going to change that to drop it down to about 60. And then the Fresnel as well, I'm going to bring that up to maybe let's say something like 80. And now if we go down to the image based uh, lighting effects. So in the built in environment, this sunset field. So this is what we used in the last tutorial. And honestly, 
just by using that preset, like it just gives such a nice, you know, kind of vibe to that, you know, um, blob that we're creating. So we're just going to change a few things in here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the reflection strength. I'm going to drop that down to about 75 and also the diffuse strength. I'm going to bring that down to zero. So I'm going to make it really dark. Now, if you want to change any of this, you can, you know, feel free to play around with anything that you like. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're just going to add an ambient light. So if I just go to right click and if I go to a new ambient light and just press OK. Now we have an ambient light and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press T to bring down that intensity. So I'm going to keep it pretty dim. So maybe something like 10%. All right, and then we'll we'll fix this up um, a little bit later with some uh, effects. So now once we've got that, the next thing that we're going to do is we're just going to come back to the texture settings. All right, and what we're going to do is we're going to change a few things. So, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to change the texture coordinates. So we're going to change that to X and NZ squared. All right, and actually we don't need anything else in textures, but we're gonna have a play around at a few things in shading. So the first thing in the shader, we're gonna change it to a smooth shader. And then we're gonna change the blend mode to add. And then we're gonna change this uh, depth. Um, we're gonna turn that off. All right, and so now we've got a little bit more light on our blob and that's looking pretty cool. So the next thing that we have to do is, cause pretty much, it's pretty much done. All we have to do is just add some adjustment layers. So the first adjustment layer that I'm going to put on here is going to be the hue and saturation. So I'm gonna search for that and I'm just gonna play around with this master saturation. So maybe I'm gonna bring it to about maybe something like 30. All right, and you can see what's happening here. Like you can see that the, you know, the red bits over here are becoming a little bit more saturated, which is what we want. So you can increase it a bit more if you like, but I wouldn't go past 40. Once we've got that, the next thing that we need to do is we need to add another adjustment layer and I'm gonna search for the effect called noise. And noise, we're just gonna bump this up to maybe something like 10%, 8%, something like that. And that just kind of ties it all together. The other thing that we're gonna do is I'm just gonna come back down to the towel uh, layer over here and I'm gonna add some curves. So now what I'm gonna do in here is I'm just gonna play around with some of these settings. So on the RGB values, I'm just gonna bring it down a bit to make it a bit more darker, but I'm just gonna bring it up over here. So now I'm creating this small little S bend, but then I'm also gonna go to the red settings and I'm gonna play around with this as well. So you can see what's actually happening once we put and play around with some of these red settings over here. So. I'm not going to do too much over here because I'm probably going to come back to this after we do our little gradient ramp in here. So speaking of gradient ramps, that's the next thing that we're going to add. We're going to add a background. So I'm just going to add a new solid. I'm going to call it BG. I'm going to put it underneath my towel and then I'm going to search for the effect called gradient ramp. And so with the gradient ramp, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make it a, a radial ramp. And then I'm just going to change some of the colors in here. So I'm using color hunt again and I just want a darkish gray. So I'm just going to pick this color and paste it back into After Effects. Cool. So now I've got my colors in there and maybe I might want to swap them to make the, the dark the majority over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play around with some of these settings. So you know, how much gray you want, you know, you can play around with that. So I just want like a little bit of a, a spotlighty kind of effect up there. So the final thing that we can add to our uh, Trapco towel layer is some glow. So I'm just gonna search for glow. All right, and then I'm gonna play around with some of these settings. So I'm gonna maybe increase the threshold, maybe somewhere around 90. And also the glow radius, 
I'm gonna kind of bump that up to maybe somewhere around, let's say 70 or so. And then the intensity, I'm gonna bring that up also maybe to about, let's go to three. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate that glow again. But now this time I'm gonna bring the values down. So I'm gonna change the intensity. I'm gonna bring it down to about one. The glow radius, I'll just increase a little bit as well as the glow threshold. I'll just bring that up back up to 100%. And so now if you've done that correctly, now you will have those red bits on your blob you know, just kind of glowing out a little bit more and I think that looks pretty cool. So now the final thing is we can go back to our uh, red uh, curves over here and we can play around with some of these settings. So depending on how red you want it, you can move this value around or depending on how much um, kind of the glow effect that you want. So you want to cry, like try to create an S bend with the red as well so yeah really it's up to you so anyways guys that's another quick tutorial on how to create a glowing blob using adobe after effects and trap code anyways guys i hope you learned something thanks for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video